heedlessness it's in relation to taraka taraka shay'an sahwan when you leave off something which you're supposed to do out of forgetfulness means you forgot to do it and you overcome with forgetfulness وَرُبْمَا كَانَ عَمْدًا And sometimes it can be done deliberately. So for example, someone is so heedless, they don't pray the salah. They know they have to, but they're heedless, they don't pray. So in the Arabic language, the ulama, they mentioned, this is what's intended by ghafla in Arabic. تَرَكَ شَيْءْ سَهْوًا You leave out something out of heedlessness or out of forgetfulness. And then it can even extend to the point when someone leaves out something deliberately out of uh, their own heedlessness and negligence and ignorance. Technically, when we use it in the term shar'i way, it refers to somebody who is missing the awareness. Faqtu shaur, you are missing the awareness or your absence absence of awareness in relation to that matter. Bima huwa haqqu an yushara bihi, in relation to something which he's supposed to be aware of. So, for example, somebody. We'll use the example of prayer again. He or she is supposed to know to pray salah. But they're missing the awareness inside themselves that they have to pray to the extent which they don't pray. So it's that kind of absent-mindedness when someone is missing the feeling of that which is necessary for him to do and it's not present in them. So in summary, heedlessness is either between forgetfulness or due to ignorance, something someone's doing it deliberately. And so when we say someone is heedless or someone has heedlessness, it is a brain blameworthy quality. As we heard in the telling with the Shaykh, it's something which Allah describes the disbelievers, the hypocrites with, that there are people who are heedless and they have with them heedlessness. And when we think about the term as well, it can be used in a positive way, but mainly it's used in a negative way. Mainly it's used in a negative way. To be ghafil is a negative trait. Unless, of course in relation to things that you're supposed to be heedless of. For example, haram, and fawahish, and zunub. We're not supposed to be well acquainted with those things. Yes, we know about them, but we're not so acquainted with them. And so those reasons you find that Allah describes the believing women, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْسَنَاتُ الْغَافِلَاتِ Allah says, those who accuse the chaste women who are ghafilat, what does that mean? It means from the sins, like zina. And they're heedless and far away from those major sins. Not that it means that we don't know about them, that we're not acquainted with them. So it's possible that there's a good meaning for ghafla. Like in majority of the definition of ghafla and the meanings are always negative. And so for us, we need to think to ourselves, how are we heedless in relation to the religion of Allah? Are there matters which we are supposed to know? But due to our ignorance, we're not well aware of them. It means we don't have any awareness in relation to them. And we give now some mention of the types of heedlessness that somebody can fall into. So even the believer, despite their alertness, because the ulama say the opposite of ghafla is yaqata, to have alertness, to be mindful and alert. That's the opposite of ghafla. Ghafla is you're heedless, you're unaware. It's possible that even the believer may fall into a type of heedlessness. So for example, due to the effects of the waswas of shaitan, they forget something. They forget something. Or they forgot the prayer, even though they pray. Or they were overcome with bad ideas or thoughts. Or they commit a sin. All of us are susceptible to that. But that type of heedlessness is not their general quality. So the first category would be then temporary heedlessness. It comes to you now and then. All of us are, are, are vulnerable to that. I mean, sometimes shaitan will overcome you. We'll mention ayah, Allah mentioned, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ That the believers are those who, when shaitan, or a group of shayateen, when they touch them, means they come with the doubts and the whispers. And they, then they fall into the state of heedlessness. But then when they remember Allah, they become with clear sight. Mubusirun, they see clearly. So this type of heedlessness is heedlessness which is temporary. It's not the quality always to be in this state. The second category would be then someone who's heedless often. It's always happening. He's always heedless. He always forgets. He always needs to be reminded. And so that will be blameworthy. And this type of heedlessness in reality shouldn't be 
befitting the believer. That they are so heedless, they always forgetting the salah ala waqtiha upon his time. They always forgetting about the things that are haram. They always being in need of reminder. So this is out of ignorance and weakness in the person's character and their iman. So in reality, the first category, you would call this person ghafil. But the one after it, the second category, this one's mughaffal. It's a difference between the two. The first one is ghafil. This one is heedless. It happens now and then. But the second one, mughaffal. He's someone often heedless. So the ulama in Arabic, they mention the difference between a ghafil and mughaffal. The ghafil is the one who is heedless sometimes. But the one who is the second category, always is heedless. Always needs a reminder. Always is not in in order in terms of their ibadat or their rajibat or the muharramat, that they're always somebody who is heedless or forgetful and, and, and inattentive. And a third category would be that kind of heedlessness with the disbelievers they fall into, in that they're far away from the deen of Allah. So they're in a temporary state of heed, uh, a permanent state of heedlessness while they're in that state of disbelief. In that they're always heedless. They don't worry about the akhirah. They don't worry about the halal and the haram. As the brother of Fajr was saying the ayah early, earlier, and the shaykh did as well, that they, Allah says that, yeah, that they know the, the zahira, the apparent nature of the worldly life. In relation to the hereafter, they're heedless. So this would describe the disbelievers. They only know the worldly life when it comes to the other affairs, heedless. So when we talk about heedlessness in ghafla, it is a quality which every one of us should be careful of. Because it stems out of ignorance. This is the number one cause of the heedlessness. To be ignorant of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be inattentive and not to be aware about the knowledge of the deen and the, and the obligations and the prohibitions. And so if we go back to the definition of heedlessness, we said it is that feeling, the absence of the feeling and awareness of that which you're supposed to be aware of. And that can only be due to somebody being ignorant of the deen of Allah. And it reaches some points that are amazing. That somebody can be so heedless that they commit some of the amazing of things, like some actions or some type of behavior, which would be so surprising. You wouldn't think anyone would commit. And so ignorance is one of the causes. As well, following the desires and following into the plot of shaitan, where he inputs the desire in us to follow our own base desires. So if you follow your desires, it can lead you astray. And it also makes you heedless to that which you knew. That which you knew to be right, but in that state, when you're committing sin, you are in heedlessness because you followed your desire. Another cause of heedlessness has to do with the fact that somebody is often forgetting Allah. So they're not paying attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His remembrance. And so Islam calls us to remember Allah often in order to prevent us from being in a state of heedlessness. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhikrullaha dhikran kathira. O oh, you who believe, remember Allah with much remembrance. And so when you remember Allah, you prevent yourself from, from falling into the plot of shaitan. And you also allow yourselves from being away from the heedlessness which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blamed the disbelievers and the hypocrites with. And it's possible that someone may also be heedless, or, for, or he or she falls into heedlessness, due to involving themselves in what is mubah, what is halal, but you have taken that affair to the extent where it's leading you away from the obligations. So even actions which might be mubah, like playing and enjoying yourself, can lead to ghafla. I will give the example with the Shaykh Jamil earlier, he cited the hadith. This is the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sakana al-badiyah jafa. Whoever lives in the outskirts of the city, he will become rough. وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ السَّيْدَ غَفَلْ And whoever follows and searches for the animals, means the hunting animals, means they're busy in Sayyid, hunting, they become heedless. وَمَنْ أَتَى أَبْوَابِ السُّلْطَانِ أُفْتَتِنْ أُفْتَتِنْ That whoever comes to the doors of the rulers, they're tested and child. Hadith is Hassan Hadith, the Shaykh al-Bani authenticated. The Hadith was intended by the, the part, مَنِ اتَّبَعَ السَّيْدَ غَفَلْ Whoever follows the animals of prey means he's hunting them. That he becomes heedless, it doesn't mean it's haram to hunt. Read the Quran, we know Allah made halal. Say to Bahar even, even the animals which are in the, in, the, in the water. Water game is halal, animals on land. However, what's intended is someone he does it excessively. 
So for example, Hafiz ibn Hajj explaining, he says that it's intended by it. Somebody is often observing this, means often hunting, until he becomes busy from the masalih al wa ghayriha. He becomes busy from the obligations and benefits of the religion, and Allah done it. So if you're always hunting, you're going to miss some of the wajibat and some of the mustahabbat. And that then it makes us to think in our own lives about the things which we do often with our time that makes it heedless of that which is better. So for example, somebody may be busy on the computer. And while it's not haram to use the computer or the cell phone, to often be using it until you're not reading the Qur'an and you're not coming to the masajid or the hiliq al-dhikr, the places where the learning and the lessons are going on or even visiting one another, then in this case, this is ghafla. Because in the hadith here, it doesn't say it's prohibited to hunt. But too much of it can become now lead to ghafla. What about things, things that are more distracting than even hunting? We need to think carefully of social media. We think about the internet. And now people that are on the television shows and the, so- the soap operas and drama. And if you're watching these things, what a kind of heedlessness you're going to put yourself into. So when you take a look at this hadith, it teaches us that heedlessness can even come by way of that which is even mubah. For example, hunting. So we shouldn't ask the question only that, how can I avoid heedlessness means I have to learn, yes. But also be careful regarding the mubahat. Things that are halal, that you're doing too much. And you're not giving attention to things which are recommended. For the Sunni Muslim, the person about the sunnah should be busy mostly in their lives with that which is obligatory and that which is sunnah and recommended. Look for the things in your life which are better. So sometimes we ask the wrong question. We may ask, is it halal? And no doubt halal is halal. But we need to ask, are we doing also that which is recommended from us? For the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we combine this hadith with his other advice, Hadith Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, ihris ala ma yanfa'ak. Be eager in that which benefits you. Musta'in billah wa la ta'ajuz. And seek Allah's assistance and don't be lazy. When you combine this hadith with this, you see that even what is mubah, it has limits. Because once you do things excessively, you may lead now to lack of benefit. So the benefit we take from that, heedlessness can even come through that which is recommended. And there are many examples of heedlessness. And many things that can come from it. it. means that a person can reach the state of heedlessness till they even don't realize their state. It means they're in such a bad state, they don't even realize how bad they are, how far away they are from Allah and His, recomm- and His religion, how far they are from Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sunnah. They see themselves to be maybe in good state, but in rally- reality they're not. And we also want to mention that some of the ulama, they recorded in the, the various books, examples of the mughafireen, those who are heedless, in order to give us a warning from being like them. People who are so ignorant, so heedless, that they would take things that are considered established in the deen, and then they wouldn't understand. And so for us today, we obviously know that we live in a time period of heedlessness when we look at the general masses, that they are far away from the khair. They are not that close to it. But when we look at these stories, the people who are heedless, it gives us a reminder not to be in that state. It gives us a reminder that we don't reach the level that we are so heedless, that we end up even doing the things that are considered from the amazing affairs. I will give an example, which the ulama they narrate. Uh, a story in relation to when people are so heedless about knowledge that they end up reaching points of extreme, extremism and points of, 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 of danger. It's narrated uh, by Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi, rahimahullah. One of the scholars of the past, Maliki scholar, uh, that one day, another scholar of his era named Shaykh Al-Tartushi, rahimahullah, he, he came to the masjid in the area which he was in as well, and he began to pray. And the Shaykh Tartushi was the Shaykh of his zaman. He was the imam of his time. It means that in terms of knowledge and, 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 and name, he was the biggest. Back in when he was in the masjid, and this is in Andalus, so in Spain, Muslim Spain, he got, he got up and he began to pray his sunnah, or entered and prayed the sunnah as soon as he went, walked in, nafal. And as he prays, he raised his hands in the takbir, right? And also when he's coming out, or going into ruku' and above, out of ruku' Rafa al is from the sunnah. So some of the awam in the masjid who don't know any better, and they're madikis, and in the masjid madiki, they don't prefer that. They prefer that, the takbir, that there is Rafa al in these in these positions. Even though it's in the madhab, as a minor opinion, it's not the stronger opinion or the more widely one, accepted one. So some of the awam, along with the leader of the area, 
became upset with what this imam was doing, such that they decided to kill him. They said, what is he doing? And what is he bringing this to the masjid? Because he's so heedless, he's so ignorant, that they wish to even dump his body and throw him into the river. So at this moment, Imam Ibn al-Arabi himself was sitting there in the masjid, and he's listening to what is happening. And they came to him because he's not a notable scholar. And they told him, what is he doing? And he explained to them, this is, not the, this is from the sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It has a root in the sunnah, even though our madhab before it prefers the other opinion. It is still in the madhab until he was able to calm them down. To that extent that people were so ignorant that they were wishing to kill him, this imam of the zaman, because of something which they didn't understand. And it's not far-fetched nowadays. So someone may come to the masjid and do something, due to the heedlessness, people, they, they want to attack him or to throw him out of the masjid or to treat him in a way which is not befitting. So heedlessness can reach a prone person to that level. And this qissa, this narration was mentioned by Imam Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir, amongst others. So when we look at heedlessness, the root of it is ignorance, that you don't know. And the reality is that when we're so heedless, we also think perhaps to ourselves that we're upon khayr. And reality, they were not. So one advice for us is that we continue to seek knowledge. And that we're not aware of something, that we don't rush to say it's not from the deen. As you probably know, some things we don't know. Many things we don't know. So if you don't know, you don't come and you try to uh, think that you know everything and you react to everything which you don't know. And when it comes to heedlessness as well, when we look at our society, we may find that because we live amongst the non-Muslims as a minority, the heedlessness is more than us than maybe others. That we've become accustomed to the level that we see in our society where the bar is not very high. That many people may think that the good we have to do is not much. Such that people today may think the person who prays five times a day, who comes to the masjid here and there, is a person, inshallah, taqi, a righteous person, salih person, even though he's doing the wajibat. You can reach that level. The people today, they think this is the righteousness. And if you do more than that, you may even claim this person is an extremist. For he's doing even more than that, which they consider already righteousness. So in our society, we need to also be wary. That the level in our society is not very high. We need to encourage people to come back to khayr, and encourage them to deen. And at the same time, the people who are heedless, we need to awaken them from their heedlessness, by giving them reminders. And there are many books like this, like Imam Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, where he has written books to advise the heedless and to awaken him from their slumber. And that's what should be our job, that we wake ourselves first and others. For sometimes we see people, maybe the heedless of Allah. So we teach them muraqaba. Allah is always watching you. In Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is always watching you, ever watching. And you teach people to have muraqaba. And then, then you will learn to become fearful of Allah. And maybe somebody may be heedless regarding the halal and haram. And so you teach them what is halal and what is haram. The things that maybe you think everyone knows but they don't know. And for us as Muslims then we see heedlessness is something which can affect any one of us. And we said the temporary heedlessness, this happens to everybody. But the second type would you become ghafil, someone who is uh, affected by this. Or the next mughafal, one who is often heedless, is very dangerous. And so we should be careful in our lives that we don't fall away from the deen and from the khayr such that we become people of heedlessness. And we can describe with this blameworthy trait. وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ غَافِرِينَ Allah says, don't be from those who are heedless. It should be in our mind that we don't want to be heedless. We don't want to be people who didn't know. And that leads to the last one I want to mention, which is to do with knowing and not knowing. Because as Muslims, we may not know many things. And this is human nature. You may not know everything. Lacking certain things, you have to know. It is not permissible to say, you didn't know. Because we know طلب عن فريضة على كل مسلم Seeking knowledge and obligation upon every Muslim You have to study to that limit You have to know that basic So that which we don't know should be at least something that Which maybe it's not from the obligatory knowledge It's above not that Or things maybe are more delicate matters More differences of opinion But the wajibat, the basics More belief, wudu, salah, zakat, siyam, hajj We should not say I don't know and the reality then becomes the Muslim is dire need of knowledge. Because somebody may say, well I'm heedless because I don't know. If you don't know, you need to learn. إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِتَعَلُّمْ Knowledge is by studying and learning. But you cannot be that, you're in the state where you don't know everything. Then you know you're in heedlessness. So for example, you may come and somebody who is in the khutbah, listening to the khutbah, he never heard anything before what the shaykh is saying, or the khatib is mentioning. Or you come to halaqat, nothing you understand. That's a sign that maybe you need to learn. You need to come to the, the, the rules to study more. You're in a state of heedlessness. 
Or perhaps you might find, and subhanAllah, this is true, that sometimes even the layman, they might not know things that we think everyone knows. And I'll give you an example. Once I met a layman, and he was discussing with me that he didn't know. And this is important, he's not young, he's older, that there's a hadith in the prohibition of walking with one shoe. He said, I, I was so heedless, he said himself, that I read in Riyal Salihin, I came across the hadith, La tamshif na'al wahid. Don't walk in one shoe. And I subhanAllah, never heard in my life this hadith, he said. And you're thinking in your head, subhanAllah, this hadith, everyone knows this. At least in your mind. And to that extent, he said, I didn't know, and I feel so ignorant, he said. I didn't know. And what does it show us? That people, they don't know, but we don't even tell them. Perhaps many of us, we see people doing this, and we think this person is probably just disobedient. Just, he's not following the hadith. Little do we know, they don't even know that hadith. And then there are other things like this. So the example for us should be then, we we'll finish with this as Muslims, that we as who are coming to the masajid and learning, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to be away from some types of heedlessness, even though we may fall into others, we shouldn't take for granted everyone is not like this. You need to give people the yaqadha, the wake, uh, wakefulness, by educating them and reminding them and yourself. And also be careful that you reach the point of heedlessness, that you don't know anything about the deen of Allah. Even though this is one of the things that's going to affect the ummah, that the deen will... Uh, the people will reach a point where they're so ignorant, they don't know the basics. Even the shakarimah, la ilaha illallah. People will know it, but they don't know its meaning. We should do our best to revive the knowledge and the reminders, and remember, remind the people. And because in the remembrance of Allah, as the shaykh he was reciting for us earlier, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَى تَنْفَعُ مُؤْمِنِينَ And remind for the reminder benefits the believer. And we shouldn't take for granted that everyone knows that which we might know. Or that everyone is at the same level. Heedlessness is something which is affecting all of us. And also I remind us at the end as well, in relation to the issues of mubah, the halal, the things which Allah made halal, we shouldn't be excessive in them, to leads us to leave off that which is better. So why Allah made permissible play, rest and relaxation, it shouldn't be our life, that only we're doing this, rather we should push ourselves to reach that which is better. إن شاء الله وأن ودسم رمانده وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين